Is it Caroline? Yes, it is. I can see Caroline there. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. Okay, thank you. Do go ahead. Thank you. And Rebecca's here with me. So look, we will thank you, first of all, for inviting us to join tonight. Um, we will keep this brief because I think the material that we're showing, we have done a few events now recently where we've shown similar um, material, probably a few new photos in here, but um, we're at a point in the program where the infrastructure works are quite um, are quite long and I think you know we, we're going to be limited in what we can update so if we do a very quick run through but by all means we can come to spend more time on questions and come back to slides as needed and um, I think you know Mike has done a great job of just reminding everybody of the context of the the um, allocated site and of the consent for the Walsh Beach Barracks site and um, you can just see uh, the image on the left hand side very faintly the red line um, on the first image, just showing that a wider uh, outline consent. And then the, the uh, orange kind of arc that runs through the, the slice through the development. Uh, really, Caroline Spray is in, has she? Sorry. I can see you, Caroline. Caroline's oh. moving for me, as it were. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I am. I have noticed I'm having a few technical problems today. So if I completely lose you, Rebecca will continue. So my uh, apologies Caroline, in advance. Caroline, whilst it's lovely to see you, perhaps it might help if you're having... Yeah, great. If you want to turn your <laughs> camera off, it might okay. make your... Internet. We'll give that a go. And if it gets difficult, I will stay quiet and let, and let Becca just jump in as well. But Becca, please do as we go. But um, so just a reminder of the, the first phase of the development, connecting to the existing roundabout of the research park, down to the um, first homes, first primary school, and um, obviously opening up our very beautiful 23 acre lake and then connecting down to um, the village. Should we go on to the next slide, um, Becca? Thanks. Uh, just uh, keen to include some photos. Uh, it's obviously not been possible to get everyone up to site uh, recently. So this is just an image of Stone Bond, who are our first um, house builder on site. And you can just really start to see um, the development taking shape. So the water is obviously part of our sustainable drainage uh, pathways through the woodlands. Um, and they're just starting to prepare the woodlands now for the first place spaces. Stone Bond delivering the first homes. And you can just see our primary road uh, to the left of the development. Part of the early infrastructure obviously includes uh, cycle pedestrian connections um, throughout the campus and then part of the campus throughout the site and onto the wider um, uh, network. Part of that, as you can see, is putting in these um, pedestrian cycle bridges over our sites. So uh, part of our entrance features right beside um, the kind of northern entrance and um, this runs then right back behind, I think if anyone remembers, behind the school site uh, and connecting down onto the bridge that will cross over into the Mere Way. Uh, Sustainable Travel Hub is one of the first uh, uh, initiatives coming forward opposite uh, the Stone Bond parcel. We're working with a number of partners to make sure that we have uh, buses in for our first residents. That's um, our shuttle buses uh, connecting to the station, uh, a wider a bus network connecting into the Melton Park and Ride, uh, and also then um, more sustainable modes of travel. You know, we'll have electric bikes and possibly scooters and um, kind of information hubs here, um, bike repair shops, that kind of thing. So that's ongoing at the moment. And as I mentioned, Stone Bond uh, being our first uh, house building partner, they're on site and uh, due to open their show home uh, by November. But no doubt we'll be in touch over the next few months as they start launching their, um, uh, their sales. And Cala are uh, a little bit further behind, but uh, due to start on site, if not this month, uh, it will definitely be next month. Again, launching their show home uh, within... 12 months, a little bit longer, just time scales on first bill, just because we're starting with the number of apartments as well. Uh, and then that pretty much picks up and uh, maintains the pace of the program that we've agreed. Just worth 
uh, touching on, these all have obviously affordable housing, both parcels have 31.5% affordable, and uh, that's all for 10 years. So we're working really hard to make sure that we deliver all for 10 years from the very beginning of the development to make sure that there's a, there's a product for all different ranges of incomes. Uh, just some images of the team as they're surveying and, and uh, working on the lake to make sure it's all ready. We are so excited about opening up the lake. Um, we are talking to so many people about having our swimming, fishing area, uh, possibly some paddle boarding. We're talking about triathlons and all range of sporting activities. It, it's really starting to look so beautiful. And I think the opportunity that brings having it open from day one for everybody to use is really, really quite special. Um, and so really hoping that um, if we're allowed and uh, maybe when we do the next session um, and we can start to do these things in person um, we'd love to hold a community day to bring people up to see progress and uh, really see the lake in all its glory. Uh, obviously a big focus recently on our 810 works but also the wider improvement works that we're doing um, very conscious as mentioned earlier that this is ahead of the 810 um, uh, study being finalised and you know obviously this time scales are we're a little unsure of on that but I think what's really important is that the, with this this A10 improvement these improvements are going forward now uh, and we've been working really really closely with the county and and other stakeholders and making sure that we do the absolute best we can within the constraints of the existing road and it is challenging you know we're the first to say it we'd we'd love to be able to put in the roads of the cycle network that we um, ha have been able to do on the on the development, but I think you know we're working within an existing highways boundary. People's homes run right up to that boundary, and it and it has been a challenge. But we're really confident. We have reviewed this and done absolutely um, everything we can to ensure we're doing um, as much as we can improving that pedestrian cycle link into Cambridge, as well as of course our Mirway route. So the biggest investment in our 106 uh, transport uh, cycle focused investment uh, is our Mirway route um, and the bridge crossing the A10. So that's being able to be uh, more of a, a segregated route um, before and after Lamb Beach. And, and a reminder of the, the bridge that will cross the A10. And we have been working with the combined authority and the county council and the GCP just to make sure that we are coordinating the work that we're doing. Uh, we're, the last thing we want to do is, is take out this beautiful bridge in a few years time. So we're working really closely with them to ensure that they have our designs and, and we um, keep them informed of these works. Um, I think I mentioned on the last um, time we did this that we're very focused on how the play spaces are coming forward. The first two are actually being constructed as we speak, so nice and early, and hopefully all ready for the summer when um, the village and local residents can come up to enjoy them ahead of our first new residents. Uh, and also we're working closely with the um, primary school and the county council to make sure that we're considering things like outdoor learning and forest schools within the public realm, not just within the school boundary. And I think just picking up on, on Kate's question, I think just to reassure you, you know, there is significant green space on this development. We are, Becca can remind me of the percentage that we're at. I has, it, has, it has got out of my mind in the last minute. Uh, for biodiversity net gain, we're, we're, we're looking at about 13.5% at the moment and looking to get that, that up. Um, as we get into the detail of all of these schemes. So yeah, exactly. making sure that both the existing ecology that's there, the woodland and the grassland is, is improved, but also putting in place new landscape uh, has been a, an absolute priority. And it's one of the reasons that, that we do that ahead of the house builders, alongside the house builders moving in that green infrastructure goes in alongside the, the, the gray infrastructure of, of the cycleways and roads and drains and the blue infrastructure, obviously, as you can see here. And a lot of the work that the guys have been doing is also sort of making sure that we've got marginal planting at the side of the uh, of the water here to to really hit our um as well as our biodiversity net game we've also got a species action plan that is specifically supporting um species that are either under pressure in the local area uh, or fit in with the with the habitat um uh targets more locally and in fact there's a couple of examples here you may be able to see some of them from the a10 are um uh, bug hotels beetle 
uh, areas and uh, some of our bird boxes that are going up in the trees as well. So there's an off, they're not just piles of logs, they are, they are genuinely <laughs> part of our species action plans. Um, and uh, the team are working really hard on delivering those at the moment. Absolutely. And, and, and as Becca said, the intention is that this, these you know, spaces will be ready for, for people to use by this summer, you know, as soon as we're ready to open up the, the development. Um, and I think just going back to the point on wider green space, um, you know, we've always committed to opening up as much temporary space in the short term as well. And I'm sure, Kate, you recall those conversations we've had with the parish. You know, we're, we're already looking at how we open up the green space just off Denny and Road early. We're looking at, as we've progressed the demolition, how we can open up some space within the development short term. We've been working with the local football clubs to do that. So I think, um, just to reassure you, I hope you will be pleasantly surprised when you see the extent of green space that will be available for use um, by the end of this year. Uh, and just picking up on some the heritage as well, obviously a lot of this is about future and, and future development, um, but we've uh, we've got archaeology going on at the moment, uh, obviously with both the weather, uh, the winter and COVID, uh, they've been slightly up against it, but we have uh, been able to host a couple of archaeological visits um, with local groups and we've got the local school coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Um, so if you are interested in coming in and finding out uh, what they're up to, then let us know. You can log on on our, on our website or get in touch with my colleague Bruce. Uh, and we'll also be looking to hold uh, another update uh, exhibition at the Farnham Museum this summer um, where we can share some of the finds uh, that are coming through at the moment. Um, we also had a really good session with Heritage Group last week uh, to draw on this, the uh, naming consultation to help us think about the street naming strategy for the site and making sure that the uh, agricultural farming history as well as the military history uh, is blended in. So that will be something we'll be reporting back hopefully uh, in the next um, session. Thank you very much uh, and I, I, I'd like to, um, while you're there, thank you very much, you've got your slide and, and thank you very much for putting up the um, contact details for Bruce Callender um, because one of the questions coming up ref will relate to that. But firstly, before we miss it, can I can we ask the question from Ivan Gilzine? Can you tell us if any plans have been made for a burial ground within the new town? Um, so, uh, well, we, at the moment, there's no, there's nothing set out in Section 106 uh, or in the spatial planning for additional burial space. We obviously put a significant amount of space over to uh, an enhanced existing um, cemetery, uh, part of the early works with that. And I think the view was that there was quite a lot of space there, but it was something that we would keep under review, uh, talking to the Parish Council and, and planners and others going forward. Thank you very much. And... Um... Sharon, did you want to pick up on these questions or would you like me to continue? No, it's fine. I can see the ones um, that are in the question and answers for uh, this item. So Jane Williams, uh, can you tell us if any plans have, um, so we've, we've done that one, sorry. Jane Williams, can you say why are you pile driving on the site and what may be done to reduce the noise nuisance to the village? So that's for Caroline or Rebecca. Yeah, um, well, we have, as you know, apartments are being built on the development. And so it's, it's, it's uh, not unusual to um, install power foundations for apartments. Um, I just, the rig has just been delivered to site. So I am not aware of any noise issues. This is up the, at the moment would be right at the north of the site. And I don't believe we've received any complaints of noise for piling for foundations that, from that distance. But um, you know, more than happy to pick that up separately if there is a concern over noise because we're, we're certainly not aware of it yet. Thanks, Caroline. And then from Nigel C. Marks. Hi, Caroline. Great to see the A10 cycleway underway. Any news on the lighting for disability groups so the pathway can be used safely? Do you know why the pathway was not inclusive? Um, lighting is not difficult. <sighs> So the, the existing column lighting on the A10 has been obviously part of the review as, as we've been widening the um, existing path. And I think that is a really important point here. We're widening the existing pedestrian cycle route that has lighting column along the A10. Now we have been uh, in, in regular discussion with the county on lighting and requirements for additional lighting. There are some ongoing conversations about that. And I 
you know, fully committed to continue working with the county to ensure that if we need to make changes to the scheme that, that we can. And um, we were really keen to get this scheme underway for a number of reasons. Um, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of focus on the A10, you know, for for really sad reasons that we're all very aware of, and obviously the recent fatality. And you know, we were really committed, and as have the county been, to working closely together to make sure we can deliver these improvements as fast as we can. So we, as you might be aware, have accelerated the delivery of the Toucan Crossing um, on the A10 years before it was um, a, a obligated to do so in planning. And we're really keen to do the very best we can. So look, genuinely committed to continue working and talking to the county to see if there's anything we've missed or if there's um, further lighting that's required. Thank you, Caroline. And We've then got a question from Mike Williamson. Have the issues about installing a bus stop close to the old railway station been resolved? How will this work if when the crossing is changed to full barriers? Oh, this one is really painful, I'll be completely honest. And I'm in absolute agreement. We desperately, desperately want to be able to connect our buses and the new development across the tracks and ideally, you know, ideally we'll do a loop in the car park and the shuttle bus would come back out. We are having some challenges with this, this height restrictions on the car park. Network Rail have some challenges about locating a new bus stop um, close to the railway tracks. So we're working with so many partners on this. What we had done was, and I think anyone that has seen the application that was submitted, we very clearly set out in our cover letter what our interim solution is or what the plan is at the moment is everything, the maximum we can do given these constraints, but that we are fully committed to still working on this and finding a solution. Nobody wants the bus to cross those tracks more than we do. And um, we don't want to drop our residents off and then ask them to cross the tracks on foot. Um, and I think it's, it's uh, you know, so I've been in complete agreement with some of the challenges raised. We are finding it difficult to get the bus stop located on um, on the east of the tracks, but we are still working on it. So I'm afraid I don't have a final solution, but but other than to say that we're doing all we can to make that happen. Um, and we have, we are talking to the county about a couple of options on, on the car park if possible. Um, and as for the barriers, I did see, I, we are aware obviously that the, the barriers are, are moving forward, which is great news. And we obviously have the contribution in the interim from first occupation that funds uh, the staffing of that crossing. So to make sure from first occupation that's staffed and safer. So that's how it will be managed in the short term. And then obviously the barriers will be controlled. Thanks very much, Caroline. Um, and I just wanted to pick up on the, the noise of the piling and I can see that Jane has Jane Williams has put in the Q&A that this was mentioned at Water Beach Parish Council, which it was last night. Yeah. I wondered, it, it would appear that some piling has already started unless what we were hearing was demolition, but I think it, it, if it was being heard as piling, just been, um, it has started. So. We did just take um, the, so we've got a lot of noise receptors and noise monitoring that's going on as part of the demolition, but obviously picks up any other noise uh, as well. Um, we, so we, we haven't had any complaints on noise, so, uh, you know, please do let us know if, if there are issues with that. Um, the guys checked the noise transmission recordings this morning. That they're at about 10% of, you know, uh, of, of the maximum that, that, that they can be. So. At the moment, they seem to be within a very acceptable level. I mean, obviously, we sit the other side uh, as well in the office on that, so we're we're kind of uh, aware of some noise. But uh, I mean, the the main so, aspects of, so, of bringing the we're not feeling any piling noise. So we are we're a lot closer to it than the village. So we'll we'll have to take that away and investigate it because it's not something that we were aware was having an impact. So if people do hear noise and are disturbed by it, then the sensible thing is to call Bruce Callender. And, and then he can look into it at the time, can't he? Yeah, okay. if you ring the office, then yeah. it, it's better to get a time in the office or, or email Bruce on, on the details. Uh, and I can easily put those in the chat as well if that's um, Okay, if that's, that's, that's super. Thank you very much indeed. And hopefully you'll stick around for any questions at the end, if that's possible. Thank you. Yeah.